So, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Fujifilm for taking me to the great country of Japan so I can share you my images and my thoughts on my photography. So, when I was uh, ha having my 15th birthday, my father gave me my first camera as a birthday gift. So, it was an old rangefinder camera and I loved that camera and I brought it with me everywhere. And that was the beginning for my search for the perfect camera. So, what is a perfect camera? A perfect camera is a camera that becomes a part of your mind, it becomes a part of your eye, and it is, will be the tool for you to get out what, uh, the images that you want to show. So, uh, ever since I was 15 years old, I've been looking for the perfect camera, and I have tried a lot of different cameras. I could say I have tried them all. And one day in uh, 2011, I uh, bought a new camera, uh, the X100, the Fujifilm X100, and I realized that now I had found the perfect camera that I had been looking for. It was like when you come home. So, uh, one of the first, this is one of the first pictures I took with that camera, and it was like this camera told me what it was all about. There was a text on the screen, and I didn't see that when I took the picture. So, uh, you don't, uh, it's in Swedish, so I have translated it for you to be easier to understand. And the English uh, translation is, I think it's about intimacy. So, what is the intimacy? It's the Im intimacy of the moment, that you are present in the moment. You can come close, you can come close what you photograph, you can be you become a part of it. That's what I mean with an intimate moment. You are in a moment, and those parts in the moment, they are like parts in a puzzle. And suddenly, when you have them in front of you, everything falls into place. And the greater the, uh, the, the, uh, the image becomes greater than all the parts together. It, it is at that moment you see what life is. So this is an example of it, like a moment, one of these moments. I'm uh, walking to my, where I work. In, I work in Stockholm, so I'm on my way to my work. And uh, when I'm out, I al always carry my camera like this, to be fast. The if something happens, I can just... And this old man comes up to me and look at the camera and he says, is that a good camera? And I'm in a hurry to my work, and I think, oh, now a man comes and talks to me. I have to go to work and do my, uh, my work. And, uh, but I have to show me some respect, so I talk to him because he's interested in the camera. And uh, after 20 minutes, we, have, uh, we, are talk fin we are finished with the talk. And I have never seen that, this man before. I have no idea anything about him. The and... and uh, so we introduce each other when we are talked. And at that moment, he tells me his name. I realize I have known this man for 20 years. I know who he is. I know his story about his life. And I know his story, how it took 20 years for him to escape from East Germany to West Germany. Because one evening he met my mother and told her his story, and she told me. And that was 20 years before I met him. So in, Stoc in Sweden, Stockholm, Sweden, we live up in the northern Europe. We have uh, long uh, winters that are dark, very little light during the day. But in the summer, it's the other way around. We have uh, very much light. The sun go sets very, very late, maybe 9, 10 in the evening. And this evening, uh, the light in the evening is what we call the light in the north. And the most magic night of the whole year is the midsummer night, when there is the most light. So, this picture is from the midsummer night's eve. When, and the time is about 10.30, and still there is light. It's not as much light as you can see here. And that's what I think is fantastic. My friend wants to take, has a beautiful view from her window and take a picture. So she opens the window, and I take a picture of her when she's taking that. And how the soft 
light is catched by the camera, the light inside and outside. I think it's magic. These two men, it's 35 years between them. The young man is 25 years old. The old man is 60 years old. And Hello. still they are brothers. They have the same father. So I wonder, how do they relate to each other? What do they talk about? I usually take my camera and I go out for walks to see seek for pictures, for images. I think that you can find the most interesting pictures close to where you live. And one set uh, Saturday, I'd been walking for a couple of hours. I was tired. I thought, I will go home, have something to eat, get some energy. I'm just a couple of blocks from home and I hear music. I can hear music the and I don't know where it comes from. So I'm curious, I want to know, where does the music come from? So I turn and go back. And just around the corner, there is this band standing in the middle of the street playing music and people are dancing in the street. I don't know how it's in Japan, but in Sweden, people don't dance in the streets. So I had my images that day. I know this great photographer in Sweden and uh, he usually says like this. You come to a place and you see this is a good place. Here you can have a good picture. And you see the light. And you see this light will make a good picture. But there is something missing in it. So you stand there and wait. And something will happen. So I found this wall close to where I wor work in Stockholm. And I saw the light. It was a beautiful light. But, and the trees were making these shadows, these strange mystical shadows on the wall, like some mystical figures dancing or something. Some, yeah. So I was standing there, I took some pictures, I waited a little, and it didn't take more than five minutes. And these two persons, suddenly from nowhere, appears and walks by in front of my camera. And at that exact, precise, right moment, the man turns his head and looks straight into the camera. I told you I bought the X100, but after a couple of months, there were some rumors that was, there was coming another camera that was called the X-Pro1. So I was already in love with the X100, and I knew this, I need this camera. I want this camera. So I went to my camera dealer where I uh, buy cameras, and I said, when the X-Pro1 comes, I want the first. I want the first you get in Sweden. I need that first camera. Just a couple of months after I got the camera, I was out walking again, like I told you before, I like to take walks around where I live. And on the parking place, when I pass by, the, there's these three men lifting weights and doing workouts. So I take some pictures of them. This is one of the pictures. And I've never seen them again. I've never been on that parking place again. So I think mem uh, images are like memories. They're like a part of our memory. You see something and you think this is a part of your memory. It could be a memory, a real memory you have, or maybe sometimes I wonder if it becomes a memory just when I see it. This man is lying in the sun and he has fallen asleep. He has read his uh, newspaper for the day. He has had his sandwich. He has had a cup of coffee. And now he's just enjoying the sun. So these memories, which I collect in my images, when I share them with you, they become your memories. And since it's memories, you have to make up your own story, what they are about. I think it's per uh, fantastic how the nature provides things for us photographers. Can you imagine the, ma the owner of this bike? Do you think that when he parked this bike at this place that he was thinking that the colors of the bike will match perfectly to the sign on the wall. So for us photographers, a good picture is always like a gift. Uh, Italian painter from the uh, 15th century, Leonardo da Vinci. He uh, had, used to have a saying that I say in English. I don't think he ever spoke a word English, but it sounds good in English. It goes like this. Simplicity is the highest form of sophistication. And I think it's like 
that way. Sometimes we try to overdo things too much. So there is another uh, French writer who is talking about the same thing. He has another quote that I also like. His uh, name was uh, Antoine Saint-Exupéry. And uh, he wrote a very famous book called Little Prince. And this saying goes like this. Uh, perfection is not achieved when there is no, nothing more to add, but it's achieved when there is nothing more to take away. There was a mus musician once who asked me, because I teach in uh, Stockholm, I have uh, workshops in uh, photography, and this uh, musician asked me, he said to me, can I be a good photographer? And the nice thing is that music and photography, they are related, they are built the same way. So how do you make music? You have rhythm, you have harmony, and you have melody. So what is the rhythm in the picture? The rhythm in the picture is how the things you have in the picture, how they are placed out on the surface. That's the rhythm. So what is harmony? Harmony are, is how they are placed in rela relationship to each other. It also goes for the colors. How the colors are in the picture is also part of the harmony. And the melody, that's the story in the picture. So now you know it when you see something. Rhythm, harmony and melody. And you can be a good photographer. So I'm a strong believer that you can find all these interesting pictures around where you live. You can also find them even in your, in your own kitchen. But you can also, of course, find them when you go on broad, on a vacation or a travel or something. So a year ago, I was in Berlin. Berlin is in Germany. It's uh, away from Stockholm, Sweden. And I was, vis I was visiting the Brandenburger Tor. The Brandenburger Tor was uh, the, on the border between East Germany and West Germany. And I was thinking, how am I going to take a picture of this place? And these three girls walk up to me with a camera. And they ask me, can you take a picture of us? And I say, well, of course I can take a picture of you. But then I also want to take some pictures with my camera. And this is what they did. I have never met them before or after. I don't know who they are. It's those strange moments that I'm talking about when I was talking about the intimacy of the moment and what can happen. So the pictures you have seen now, they're like my diary. Pictures I take all the time, every day, to, to uh, build up like my memories and my images from my everyday. But I also work as a photographer. That's my main occupation. So when I work, I take pictures of people. And when I started to use these Fujifilm cameras, for my everyday, my own pictures, I soon realized they will work, work perfectly also when I work. Because it's the same there. You want to catch that moment of intimacy when you're close to some person. This is a very famous Norwegian actor. Her name is Liv Ullman. She's an actor and a director. She used to be married to the Swedish film director Ingmar Bergman. He's dead now son, uh, since a couple of years, but he used to be as famous as your Akira Kurosawa. This is a friend of mine, a Swedish photographer. His name is Trun. He uses a lot of darkness and light when he makes his picture and what happens between those. So that's what I wanted to show in this picture. It looks like the la light comes from inside of him and shines out. I don't know if you ever heard about the photographer Steve McCurry. He works for uh, National Geographic and magazines like that. He works a lot in Asia and he has taken what is maybe uh, in modern time the most famous picture. The name of the picture is the Afghan girl and it is seen today like a modern time Mona Lisa. So I have another friend in Sweden. His name is Jiho. He lives in Paris. He's becoming uh, art photographer, the, 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 the most famous Swedish art photo photographer internationally fa known today. But he's a photographer, so he doesn't like to be photographed. I told him, go and stand in your corner, this will be a good picture. But he was very stubborn, he said to me, you can't tell me what to do, you can't tell me what to do all the time. 
Then I showed him the picture on the back of my camera and he smiled. There is this photographer, his name is Anton Kurbin. He's used to photographing big uh, pop stars and rock stars. Uh, it's his job to photograph like Depeche Mode and U2. But now he's a film director, he's made a couple of films. So I wanted to show him in the Light from the North that was made famous by Ingmar Berman, like I told you before. I started with the X100, the X-Pro1, and I've tried all the X cameras. Today I work a lot with the X-T1, so that is my camera I chose today. But these uh, portraits that I've shown, they, they all have one thing in common, and that is that they're all taken with the lens 35mm. The Magnum photographer Elliot Erwitt was visiting in Sweden. He's now over 90 years old, I think. This day, there was a lot of press photographers who wanted to take his picture. And they all had the big cameras with the big lenses and the big flashes. Me? And Elliot Erwitt was like this. He didn't think it was funny. He's known for his pictures that they have a lot of humor. So I always wait until all the others are ready. And then I come with my camera. In this picture, I had a Fuji X-E2. And what do you think Elliot Ehrman did? He was like this. Oh, that's a nice little camera. So what camera Elliot is that? Josta Ekman is one of the greatest Swedish comedian actors. and comes from a family of really great big character actors. But now he's an old man. He has stepped down and is actually a really, really shy man. Mira Klee is a young Swedish painter. She makes really, really dark portraits when she paints. So I wanted to show that what we see in reality may maybe isn't the real reality. There is a crack, and when you see that crack, you can see that something is behind that, and maybe that's the reality. I think it's fantastic, these small cameras, this picture is not taken in a photo studio. It's taken in a dark bar. And just see how it catches the light that is around. There is a street photographer, his name is Bruce Gilden. He's the toughest photographer that I ever met. He has been walking the streets of New York and photographing for 40 years. And now he's 67 years old. And if he sees that you're up for a trick, he will punch you in the nose. One of the greatest photographers today, maybe, is Sebastio Salgado. When we, he works on a project, it takes him 10 years. And he always works with big questions about humanity. But I think he has a beautiful profile. He looks like an eagle. When I was young and I started to photograph, I uh, found pictures from this English photographer. His name is David Bailey. He was one of the greatest fashion photographers in London in the 1960s. He's 77 year, seven years old. He smokes all the time, but he still photographs. So from when I was young, I knew I want to meet this man one day. I have to meet, see who he is. And this summer, I was lucky. I was in France, and he was in France, having a speech just like I'm having this big. And I knew this is my chance. It will never come back. So when he was walking off the stage, I stretched out my hand to, s to salute him. I hold his hand and I said, I'm a photographer. I would like to take portraits. And I didn't let go of his hand. So he couldn't run away. So I took the hand, I led him to the wall, put him up to the wall and took my picture. I'm fascinated by those eyes that he, all the things that he has seen. And that's, the intimate moments that I want to speak about and uh, I want to thank you for listening. Do you have one final message or advice to the audience? Yes, I have one. Take more pictures. Thank you so much. <laughs>